What's up, everybody? In this week's episode of Movie Time, we finally watched Triple R. If you haven't, why haven't you yet? If you're wondering why I'm so excited about it, well, watch this episode. We're going to talk about the movie and what impact could this movie have on Hollywood in the future. It's about that time. You know what time it is. It's movie time coming at you now. What's going on, everybody? You got the movie boys back in town this week. You got myself. Don't call me sir. The name is Renee. Yes. Low-key geek here. And my boy, Blake the Wolf. What's going on, dude? What is up? Renee, I love doing this with you. I've missed it. Uh, and are 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 you ready to talk about this movie? Because I don't know if I if I've wrapped my mind around it yet. Um, it, it's like that. Um, who who's that, who sings that song? Like, are you ready? Um, it, it's like that would have been like the perfect. If this was Americanized, this, that would have been the perfect song to start the movie off with. Yeah. No. Yeah. For sure. Or some like, are are aren't you glad I didn't say? banana or something sure <laughs> that's the joke there's not even actually a joke dude sure. i'm i still i watched this movie yesterday i still haven't like absorbed it yet i started re-watching it today just to try yeah. to wrap my mind around the insanity amazingness of this movie and i'm oh my god having this conversation yeah there's just so much to talk about and again if you haven't already figured it out we're talking about the indian movie rrr <clears throat> that is available to watch on Netflix now. Uh, like a lot of people probably don't even realize that um, it kind of like came and uh, it's been on the service. But Blake and I finally watched it, and we are going to be spending this episode talking about it. So if you are new to the channel, you just happen to come across doing your little search for our our, our thoughts and comments and all that stuff like that. We are sorry you landed on this video, but welcome aboard. Uh, if you happen to like what we, you see or you're curious, who the hell are these two jerk offs? Well, this is the movie time uh, podcast video show or whatever you want to call it, where two buddies just talk about and rap about movies. Um, we are we put out new episodes every week and you can find that on the Loki Geek channel. So if you like it, hit that like subscribe notification bell for all episodes that are uploaded and if you prefer an audio version you could find this episode and many others on your podcast platform of choice just look for the low kiki channel there and uh check us out and give us a good rating you know and again all of the things that we ask the liking the commenting please comment because we obviously would love to hear your whoever watched this movie your thoughts and feelings about it um it doesn't cost you a thing we're not asking for any dollars or anything just yet. Uh, we may eventually down the line, but if that's all, that's all based on you guys uh, and gals watching. But uh, everything costs you for free, and it goes a long way. So definitely do comment, like, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff. But enough, enough. Let's talk about this this wacky, outrageous movie, Triple R. I guess we could call it Triple R, right? I. R R yeah that that works better I think yeah yeah uh, so tri it's yeah. kind of like the I guess like triple X it's a similarly like <laughs> movie of like everything is used for violence and nonstop right. bizarreness so but yeah let's go with triple R yeah I like I like triple R so triple R is this Indian action movie that came out um, sometime March of this year um, and when it was released and it had like a global release not all at the same time but eventually made to other markets and all that stuff like that here in the united states for that month it came out it was actually in the top five for several weekends um i remember because i used to do like a box office rundown which may or may not be coming back but we'll, we'll see um but it was always within the top five um uh, it didn't make a whole lot of money but not a lot of movies at that time was was really making a lot of a lot of money but um it had a budget of this movie had a budget of 69 million dollars it's one of the most expensive indian movies that were made to date uh, the worldwide box office is 150 million dollars uh, which is nothing to sh to you know sneeze at, um, and from what I heard, it broke the record for the highest collected opening for any Indian movie. Um, and what that means is that they tallied up all the opening um, you know numbers 
for all the territories that came out in and they added that all up um so obviously a lot of people have been buzzing about this movie since it was released on netflix my friends could not stop talking about this movie i was at a barbecue a couple weekends ago and they keep saying you gotta check this movie out you gotta check this movie out all that stuff i got and finally this week i did um, even um, several comments on the channels to uh, some of our episodes, especially when we did our favorite movies of the year so far, said, suggested you should watch Triple R. Um, so this week we finally did. And wow, what a ride. Wow. It, it's wow. a wild, wild ride. Yeah. Now, I'll start off by saying this. And I, and I think, and Blake, you and I, we kind of are come from the same boat here. We are not that familiar with Indian movies. You know, especially like the Bollywood type movies and all that. Um, so I was not sure what to expect, but I knew of some of the things to show up in a Indian movie, you know, like the musical scenes and the musical numbers and the dancing. This definitely had all that, all that and a bag of tricks because it was just crazy over the top, but not even in a bad way, just like full-blown entertaining action sequences. Some of the most creative action sequences that I've ever seen in recent years. Um, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be hearing a lot about this movie in the upcoming years, especially once Hollywood starts cherry-picking on what they want to kind of borrow from a movie like this. And we, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But overall, the movie was a lot of fun. Um, the acting was okay. It wasn't anything that I would say was like outstanding or phenomenal. Um, it, it, the only thing I would say is that in any country that you go and you watch a movie that portrays, um, you know, white people or English speaking people, the dialogue is always a, a little bit corny. Um, and the, the blatant, uh, stereotyping of white people against foreigners. <laughs> Especially when in period pieces, you know, like the 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 racism and the racial slurs were very freely uh, thrown out there, you know, describing the Indian people and all that. But this movie does take place in the twenties during the colonization of the British Empire, you know, in India, and kind of like the revolution to try to fight against that, right? So. Uh, they kept it as guess as historical as possible. Um, I don't know uh, so much about the rest of the, the movie, but it was a lot of fun. It was very entertaining. My only major, major criticism is that it is really long. It is uh, a little over three hours long. Um, and I, I just felt at times it really felt like it. Um, you know, like there is a, a definite defining intermission moment that I would highly suggest everyone to take because the story does kind of switch in between those times. Um, so it was it's a good break if you wanted to go, you know, call it a night and then start up again the next day or take like a little break and then just kind of like uh, revisit it later. But I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. Blake, I'm so curious. What are your thoughts on the movie um, as a whole? Dude, I still I don't I don't even know how to fathom this movie for for anyone who doesn't know, Renee and I met uh, maybe like six years ago. I was we saw a poor child who needed help. I was on a horse. He was on a motorcycle. Absolutely. We, we just waved at each other and we knew what to do. Um, we did no, one of these things like we yeah. do one of these. And then that was and it. Then, the yeah, bond was sealed. Which if you haven't seen the movie, uh, enjoy that moment. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously. I, like you said, I don't have a context for Bollywood movies. I know in my, I, on Letterboxd, I have a list of like 150 movies. One of them is a Bollywood movie I saw. That's going to be like almost the extent of it. Uh, it was called um, Bombay Velvet. Absolutely loved it. It's one of the ones that like came over to indie cinemas uh, a handful of years ago. I have a very little knowledge of it. But what you and I do is we talk about every movie that we've seen mm -hmm. and we try to see every movie that's like especially hitting if it's going to hit mainstream theaters we're seeing almost all of them and then yeah. we have our own little niches and fortes there this is kind of a blind spot for you and i but that's part of what we're talking about today this is a movie that is crossed over i heard yeah. some hype about it i heard some of my favorite movie podcasts talking about it and so 
while we're not going to necessarily be able to like contextualize it in Bollywood, what we can do is talk about global cinema, movies that cross over to America, and the American phenomenon of taking things that other people made, turning it into parts, and then making those into a, a Matt Damon movie called The Great Wall or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, there's, I'm, there's some things about this movie that are absolutely phenomenal and we know 100% will happen. I don't even know if it makes sense to like assess the plot or the dialogue or the acting or whatever. This movie was just a phenomenon. Literally like there are moments of things that are happening that I've never seen before on screen. And some of the reviews I've seen are like, didn't know movies could be like this is the mm -hmm. general tone. And I have felt the exact same way. So I don't even think we could spoil this if we wanted to, because it is right. a viewing experience. Uh, we talked about, uh, you mentioned the box office of it. I can't imagine what it would be like to be there opening night of a crowded theater. Because yeah. even at home alone, watching this movie at 2 a.m., I'm like pumping my fist and like standing up and being like, I cannot believe I just saw that. Yeah. There, it's not even like, <laughs> it's creative um, chore fight choreography and the way that they're using horses and motorcycles in ways I've never seen before and couldn't fathom. And it reminds me in some ways of like a John Wick where you go, oh, wow, I did not mm. expect that to be like in the world of physics that I know to be possible. Yeah. This movie takes that times 10. Uh, I had an awesome, awesome time. If anyone likes action movies and those anything over the top, excessive action, if you enjoy when Tarantino does that or when you, if you enjoy when John Wick does it, if you're okay mm. with like the Fast and Furious thing where, okay, we're going to make it more ridiculous. I know some people are bothered by that kind of movie. I think those people need to get the stick out of it, out of themselves and yeah. enjoy film. This is one of those. It did it so damn well. It makes sense that it's, that it's, that it got our attention for sure. Yeah. And I'm hoping that next time I'm at a, a, a you know, a, a house party and this movie comes up that everyone will be like, yeah, you saw that too. It's, it's now it's on Netflix. You mentioned the, um, the box office, one of the budget things that's interesting is I think it's like the first or second most expensive Indian movie of all time, but it was only about 72 million US dollars. And it made that back double. Plus about half of that separately is Netflix's deal and Z5 who does like Indian streaming. It's like an Indian um, Netflix concept. Yeah. They, they spent 40 million for the rights to this thing. So this thing is, a, is printing money relative to to what it cost to make the movie it to me earns every dollar and i'm all, the mm. only thing i'm a little miffed about is that i didn't get to see it in theaters i wish it had crossed over in a theatrical way to where like i as soon as i was done watching it it's the same recommendation i'm giving here on video i texted all my buddies you got to watch this i can't explain it just go see this damn movie um yeah. I, again, if you haven't seen it yet, I don't think you have to worry about spoilers. There's no way we could convey in words what this movie does. Because, like we said, I didn't know movies could do some of the things happening here. Mm -hmm. Our words definitely aren't going to do that bit of it justice. We're just going to basically be, like, hyped about this movie and trying to figure out what it does to Hollywood. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to talk about some of our favorite scenes from the movie. And, and then that general conversation of, like, so what did we just watch and what does this mean for our love of movies? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, story-wise, the concept is not that... Like, if you really were to, like, break down the story, right, or the idea of the story or the plot, it's not a story that is fresh. I mean, we've seen similar stories like this where you have two, two of the main, you know, uh, characters in a film who are fighting against different ideas. They, unbeknownst to themselves, realize, you know, they meet become friends not realizing that they're for the opposite side then there's that conflict there's a fight and then there's like a rekindling at the end and they become like best friends and all that stuff like that so we've seen this happen before um but in in the way that it's executed and it the whole movie is just an epic you know that's why you know the three hours it's just like there's so much being said and so much being shown throughout the whole thing we get full background stories about all the main characters and all that, um, the motivations, the passions, why they believe a certain thing, why they're fighting for this. We get all of that in there. Um, plus the insane over-the-top action sequences, you know? I mean, 
there's just so much to it it is for us to like break it down like little by little would just take us like two four two to three hours to do so because yeah. there's just so much yeah. I, i'm gonna interrupt you real quick i do think it's worth saying there's one thing about the of the two leads one of them he's the guy who does the scene at the beginning where he takes on an entire riot literally yeah. what looks to be about twenty thousand people and he defeats all of them uh in until they retreat that character's arc i think we shouldn't sp spoil necessarily because sure. that one did actually there was a little surprise there uh if you are afraid of spoilers skip ahead we'll say 45 seconds starting now yeah <laughs> that is actually the only thing plot wise that surprised me that he i wasn't sure but he was essentially a double agent the whole time so right. we're adding that onto the layer of everything else he is pretending to be this and the audience doesn't know and then at the halfway mark you realize oh this guy made a promise to his village and to do that he has to act like a bad cop even to his friend right i think i think we're okay back into non-spoiler attack territory that's the only thing i wouldn't want to mention to someone if they hadn't seen it before because that actually i did get surprised on that right yeah that, that was definitely like one of the the aha moments of the movie you know yeah. you know and then when you you really start putting it all together and all the pieces together and basically i want to say act three of the movie is where you really get to learn a lot about this stuff um Act three or four. I mean, there's. I feel like this movie has six <laughs> acts in it. <laughs> um, but like the second half of the movie, you really get to learn once you learn more about his family background and what kind of like gave him that motivation to do what he's doing in this movie. Yep. You you get to learn all that stuff. You know, it, like like I said, the story is like not uh, groundbreaking or anything like that, but it does lead to the entertainment factor and enjoyment factor once you, once it all unravels throughout, um, especially at the end of it all. Um, but definitely the one thing that stands out the most is the action sequences and the visual effects. Cause I, I want to say what 90% maybe of this movie is CG and computer, you know, generated. You could tell that, they put so much work into this movie, uh, hence why it's probably one of the most ex is the most expensive movie in India to date. Um, but you know, when we talk about CG and, and the use of uh, special effects, especially in American movies and Hollywood movies, um, we always hear about huge budgets being splurged, and we get a result that's like very crappy. One thing that really comes to mind is the, our, our least favorite movie of the year so far, Death on the Nile, where it just takes you completely out of the whole movie and you don't feel like you're transported anywhere within Egypt and all that. Here, you really feel like you are in the areas where they are, you know, and you feel the gravitas of certain situations and all that stuff like that. Now, is it perfect? No. I mean, to a very critical eye you will be able to say like oh this is fake that's fake oh i could tell this boy is standing in front of a green screen and not in front of like flames on the water but it's not one of those things that it takes you out of the movie and, and ruins the whole movie for you um and i think it kind of speaks volumes on how as long as the the special effects is not so badly done where it's distracting um and just like really feels more in line with what is being portrayed on screen then it's not that it's not going to be that bad you know and i think you could tell like there was a lot of a certain care that was put into a lot of these special effects um and you know especially with the the amount of animals being used in this movie uh i think that was really really well done overall i mean what what were your thoughts about when we we're talking about special effects um in the movie yeah, so first off, the the, F, the first special effects scene that got me was the wolf scene, um, yeah. because it didn't look like a natural wolf. My last name is Wolf. I wolf. am definitely able to identify a real world wolf versus a fake wolf. Um, but, like, in reality, if you gave me a shadow puppet on the wall show mm -hmm. of a wolf and it was a compelling story, I don't care if it looks like a wolf or not. Why would that matter? Right. There are times where it's done poorly and the movie sucks and that makes it bad. There yeah. are times where it's done and it like right now we've got some new Avatar movies coming out. The old ones, when you look back on them, they don't look that good anymore. 
but the story was so damn compelling, it didn't matter. And it, it was groundbreaking at the time. This one is, it's on par, at least, with like, okay, the CG is good enough. It's not taking me out of the moment. Um, and the story is so damn compelling. The, the animal fight is absolutely awesome. At some point, we'll get to our top five fight scene action moments, and that's mm-hmm. definitely going to be on there. Um, my, my general thought is, you talk, we're talking about the very epic plot and the very epic action scenes. And the plot is so dense and epic, and things are literally lay, layering on top of themselves, and it's building into this big finale. Mm-hmm. Um, the movie didn't feel long to me. I know that that's your okay. biggest complaint about it. This could have been a music video for all I care. I got so damn absorbed into it. Yeah. I did have a bedtime problem where I said, oh, shit, okay, it's getting near my bedtime. I need to go to sleep. I waited till there was this pause point. And then the next morning when I woke up, the first thought I had was, whew, I get to put on that movie again. Hell yeah. And I pressed play. It, the runtime did not bother me. I think there's the two reasons why are those two epic factors. One, the action kept me going. And then we, we talked yeah. about this off screen, uh, off camera, where the, the movie could have had a problem where once you've seen so much ridiculous over-the-top action, eventually you go, okay, well, what else is there? And you could, mm-hmm. in theory, get desensitized to it and burnt out. What this movie does, and I think part of why it worked for me as someone who does enjoy the plot story aspect, is that the stakes of the story get higher as you go further. Sure. Yep. Even though the action stays roughly as ridiculous as anything I've ever seen before. So then I am just as compelled and on the edge of my seat because I want to see how they wrap this up and who, how they win and who wins. And if, if someone takes a bullet if they have to make a big sacrifice, how that works, mm-hmm. what's the toll on them and the people. A lot of people die in this movie. Yeah, I think one of the other most epic things about this movie, and I don't know, my understanding is that this is a, uh, a feature of Bollywood. The amount of human bodies in this mm-hmm. movie was unreal. I've heard of that. And I've seen it when you see like the, the dancing scenes and there's like, okay, how'd you get 400 people in a room to all do a choreographed dance? <laughs> Right. The people power here was unreal. There's a scene where these two buddies are having a friendly competition, and the only purpose it serves is in a montage to show their friendship and their com- competitive intensity. And they climb literally a mountain of people, literally yeah. like, a, <laughs> like a cheerleader p- pyramid. But I'm going to go ahead and guess that there was maybe 500 people comprising this giant pyramid. To some degree, it's got to be CGI. There are scenes where it's an entire, like, the riot scene, and there's just bodies all over the ground, and what might be 10,000 people. I, I'm sure CGI helps fill in some of those blanks, but nonetheless, the amount of people who have sp- speaking lines and the yeah. amount of people on any given scene in the background is just unreal. And you also have a lot of death, and one of the first casualties, by, by which I mean injury, is a woman gets hit with a giant stick of wood yeah. pretty bad across the face mm-hmm. they don't it it feels like highly dramatic and if it's viewed as corny then like it's it's kind of like in an american sensibility it might be okay that's a problem like that, that, that it's just like so much violence and like you're watching people who are like poor innocent farmers getting shot down while racist things are being said about them like that's right. some of those things are kind of hard to stomach it helped in my opinion with the overall epicness of everything and it one movie it reminded me of is Inglorious Bastards where it takes historical de- defeat and oppression and then fictionalizes it Right. But it still is telling a, it's couching it in a true history of mm. oppression, violence, racism, and some horrible atrocities being done to people in the name of empire. Mm. Um, it does a good job of saying these are the stakes and this is what we're fighting for. So whenever a character, you think they're betraying the cause or for it, like I'm, I'm into it. I'm fully yeah. involved and I'm glad that they that it was such an intensely rich epic movie if they had like one thing that an inglorious bastards could have a problem with is you take something like a sacred fight of human Mm. history 
and then if you make it a shitty popcorn, we're just exploiting this for for a few bucks. That's not good. This one felt, at least to me, it felt epic as hell and worth. Like it it paid tribute to the 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 history, like the the power of that history. Of, right. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to get into uh, another thing you mentioned about the white characters. It reminded me of um, uh, Ip Man. They do that in, in at least, I think it was the second or the third Ip Man movie. Um, and then it also happens, there was a, um, uh, a John Woo movie where uh, one of, that, that's happening to you. Hap- it happens throughout. You mentioned yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 if anyone is mad about that and they're like, oh, no, the British Empire, they weren't all that bad. Like, go fuck off. This movie <laughs> made awesome was the, like, the Star Wars level, like, this is evil. Yeah. What they're doing is evil. And there is, like, the good white lady. There's the lady who's, like, yeah. looking out and saying, hey, stop being f- fuckheads to the other white people. And is like, trying to look out for the other characters. We don't really get to see what happens to her. Um, to well, she, what do you mean? She's at the end dancing with everybody. <laughs> okay. I, honestly, I'm not sure that I did notice that. Um, oh, I, yeah. They've gotten lost. It had been a, it'd been a mm-hmm. long adventure. Okay. I'm glad that she's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you get to, it's nice, it, you see that in all types of movies where y- the director, w- while at the very beginning of the movie, it's saying we're not trying to do any stereotypes or impugn any groups of people whatsoever. Yeah. It's pretty clear what the politics are, which is fucking empire that keeps its foot on people's necks. That's not good. Being nice to people and fighting for your own people and for what's just is good. Um, yeah. The movie did a good job of that and... Um, and having ridiculous, ridiculous action. Uh, I have to go off camera for one second. When sure. with where you where you want to go from here, but give me one sec. Feel free. To yeah, yeah, that. yeah. We'll we'll close out some of my comments on the movie. Like basically, like because you we were just talking about like structure and and story and all that. If you are a familiar and a fan of like musicals, operas, you know this movie flows very similarly to that type of structure where everything is chapterized, everything has their own sections. Um, You could tell the transition from one specific storyline to another. Um, The music that plays basically narrates the moments of some, like every time there's a major moment happening in the film, there is a a musical number that plays, um, or a musical score song that plays in the background that basically narrates exactly what's happening. Um, and I, I find that very fascinating. And again, I don't know if this is common in a, in all Indian movies or action movies or whatever, but I did find it uh, something new and and refreshing that I haven't really really experienced. I think one thing that you, we were talking about off screen was how if this was an American production, we'd probably hear a Morgan Freeman narrating in the background about like, and now is the time where the two brothers have walk into the sunset and the penguins are walking into the ocean. Yes. Renee, what are you getting? Are you getting audio? Sorry, my audio must be messed up. Did you just play a clip of Morgan? Is he? Uh, yeah. No, you didn't know. I I, I asked him to do a little segment for this episode. That yeah. was bizarre. I don't know if you could hear yeah. that, but Wayne, I just heard a no. Clip of Freeman I just I just I just hit the play button because I wanted to like you know back up what I'm saying. So okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. You were talking about him and he. Uh, yeah. I, I heard. Well. That was yeah. Cool. No, uh, you're 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 being very kind, uh, <laughs> but uh, but basically, like that that is like if if you are familiar with that type of structure, then this movie will really sync with you as well and, and gel with you. Um, but I think overall, I think what we're both saying is that you definitely got to check out this movie again if you're a fan of action movies. You, if you're a fan of experiencing something new in the action genre and you 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 said to yourself you know what i'm so curious what other countries do and how they tackle certain things you definitely should check out this movie because it is very refreshing it's getting well-deserved buzz and we see why you know it's getting all the the praises and recognition the amount of money that it's making it's well deserved you could tell why and, and everything when you watch the movie um and as far as like the actors are concerned like i said 
I won't be surprised if at least one of the two main actors we start seeing more of, um, because the they have the charisma, they have the the action chops. Um, it, it looks like um, one of the the actors does speak English, so I won't be surprised if uh, we see him maybe tapped for. I don't know, a John Wick like movie or, you know, uh, a, a maybe a Marvel movie or another Netflix movie. Um, one thing that comes to mind is uh, the actor Danush in The Gray Man, you know, how they have very similar kind of vibes and, and suaveness to them uh, and charisma. Um, so I won't be surprised if we see more of them. It was nice to see Ray Stevenson in this movie. So the only person I recognized in the whole movie, I'm just like, oh, I know that dude. Um, but overall, yeah, highly recommend this movie. So curious as to what all of you think about it. If it's something that you were maybe kind of curious about, or maybe you've never heard of it, are you going to be watching it now? Have you already seen it? Love to know what your thoughts and comments are. Uh, please leave them in the comments section. Let's have a discussion because obviously it, it took us by surprise and how well this movie was. And we, we just are having fun talking about it but um hey guys i hope you're enjoying this episode so far but before we continue i wanted to quickly talk about bulletproof coffee bulletproof coffee is my favorite coffee of choice to start off my mornings with why because it's clean coffee what does that mean well one there are no chemicals in it why because they go through this multi-step process of making sure that all of their beans are fully clean and free of any chemicals so that when you get the beans delivered to you it is the pure beans the pure coffee the goodness that you've been wanting the taste the flavor and the nutritional value as well with not worrying about any added chemicals or anything else put into the mix there um, it also doesn't have that weird acidic taste that some coffees give you i don't know how about you but for me some coffees kind of give me that weird sensation in my stomach makes me a little burpy and it kind of drags me down a little bit instead of really waking me up uh, which is something that i need for my coffee every day bulletproof also offers a lot of keto friendly snacks and supplements anything that you need to kind of add to your everyday nutritional needs add to your diet and make you and pretty much transforms the way you feel uh every day so uh for a limited time if you use this code on that you see on the screen right now low key geek all caps one word you can get 15 percent off your order so what what is it better than that right check out the link in the description of this episode use this code get yourself your discount and make your mornings a little bit more bulletproof with bulletproof coffee now back to the episode as we move on to i would love to talk about the action scenes in this movie because again that is the the main focal you know thing that sticks out uh, from this movie and this movie has tons of insane absurd over the top actions action scenes but like i said before not in a bad way it it kind of like puts into my mind when we think about uh hollywood cinema um the the most insane absurd action movie series is fast and furious at this point right they're trying to top each other with every movie and the the sh the bad shit crazier they get each movie they come out with, right? I won't be surprised, and we talked about this as well, if they looked at this movie and was like, all right, now we got to start upping the ante in our movies. How can we get, um, you know, Vin Diesel to ride on the shoulders of, you know, Tyrese? Uh, or is or horse, <laughs> horse is driving a car. Right, yes. That's where we got to go now, right? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, they, they got to address something like that. Because this movie really does, you know, take the creativity in action movies to a whole other level. Um, and I think it'll be just fun for us to break down or, or just talk about our favorite action scenes. And, and I think we came up with five major ones. And, and these are like the major action scenes in the whole movie. But we have to just talk about them. And the first thing that comes to mind is right from the beginning, during the whole prison riot. This is like our introduction to one of the main characters as he kind of just comes out of nowhere as part of this police force. And because of one dude that threw a rock that hit a picture of somebody, um, he want, they needed to be arrested. And this guy goes through a sea, like you said, a sea of people just to go to get this one dude 
fi- it, it's almost like watching an insane Walking Dead episode where this guy's just fighting through a horde of zombies, but these are just real people, rioters. And we we it sets the tone of the movie of like the type of action scenes that we're gonna see. Uh, what were your thoughts when you first saw this? Un unbelievable. When I got to when I rewatched it today, or I put it back on and I got through to that scene, and I was just still like, cannot believe what I'm watching. I put it on in the background because I'd seen it already, and mm-hmm. I by the time I like. I go, okay, let me check back in. It was over, which surprised me because it's not actually, it's the length of it. It's not that long. It's that when I watched it the first time, I couldn't fathom. I go, well, there's no way this is going to go well. Right. And then he just kept going and kept fighting. And that was one fun thing about this movie is that the physics don't make sense. And they let you know that early on. Yeah. But they still pay tribute to the physics. Like old James Bond movies when there's, a thousand Soviet soldiers all pointing guns within 10 feet and none of the bullets hit them, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of annoying. You're like, okay, there's got to be some possible damage happening to the main character for me to keep going. They're showing him. He's got a cut. He's bloodier. It's kind of in some ways like the new James Bond movies with Daniel Craig where you're actually seeing violence happening to the person and them suffering it. But at the same time, there's moments that are just so over the top where there's an entire crowd on top of the guy. <laughs> yeah. To that to where now we're in the territory of, um, was it Matrix 2 that starts off? Or Matrix oh, with 2? all the Agent Smiths. Like, yeah. like, like, yeah. Yep. And it's, and it's so ridiculous. But another difference is in that movie, those are like, we're, we've seen superheroes do things like this. Yeah. We haven't seen it where it's supposed to be real, real people. Like, the closest yeah. we get is maybe a James Bond or a Mission Impossible human being does something ridiculous. Like, Triple X is another one of those, Fast and Furious, that kind of thing. They're not, not, they're not superheroes. And part of the whole point of the movie is that these are regular dudes who, through determination, strength, will, training, passion, that any, any of us could be like them. There's That's an entire right. song dedicated to this concept near the end. Totally, yeah. And, and, but yeah, I love that it just, it felt like it never stopped. And all it is, is there's what, maybe 10, 50,000 people outside of, you call it a prison. I, they're trying to free someone inside or someone who's been arrested. Is it's it like a detention embassy? area or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I know one thing with this movie is not knowing the context. Like if you showed me <laughs> a prison versus an office versus an embassy, whatever, in, in an American movie, I could probably like just kind of vibe. Like I understand the politics of where people right. are how, et cetera. I don't really know some of the locations. Later on, we'll talk about like, is it a castle or is it a fortress or a home? I'm right. not sure. I don't give a fuck. What was amazing yeah. is these tens of thousands of people. Um, you, you mentioned that a rock is thrown, and the officer goes, arrest that man. I go, huh, well, that's impossible, because yeah. the man is behind a sea of people. Not this to this guy. guy. Goes, okay. <laughs> yeah, this guy was like, done deal. I got it. <laughs> and we show him, that scene to me is partially important, because his character arc, one of the reasons why, other than his amazing action, is his character arc is they're now going to award who the most amazing soldier police guys yeah. are and they named three white ass names and not his name and he's now right. pissed and i said will this turn him is this are we dealing with some departed level double agent is he a, mm. and it, no it turns out he'd already been turned he was just pissed off because he needed more power in order to get right. access to the, to the 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 powers that be um the later on uh, that that's part of the overall epic of the plot, but just that moment alone is absolutely astounding. That's when I saw that and I said, well, I'm all in on this movie because oh, yeah. if you can do that and show me that, <clears throat> it didn't, it's obviously ridiculous. It never felt like, oh, he just magically flew 100 feet in the air or anything. Like, it's not superhero stuff. Part of the reason I like this movie is I dislike, like, Harry Potter problems where it's just like, oh, anything could happen with the strength of a wand or mm-hmm. if they can fly or an Ant-Man problem, he can get bigger, small at any moment whenever they need that for the plot. They're still dealing with, like, human physics, and it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen a human body do. Yeah. So I was all in from that moment. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it definitely set the tone, and, and you you will know right away if you can, if this, like, hits you, you're in for the ride. If you feel yeah. like what is going on, like this is ridiculous, then you're not going to enjoy the rest of the movie. <laughs> because, because immediate, not immediately, but a good amount of time after. Also, it's worth noting that 
the the whole intro of the movie is like 40 minutes you know like like basically you get this like background story then you get like this introduction to this guy then you get an introduction to his buddy and then you get the meeting of the two and that's the next big action sequence that i wanted to talk about where it takes place on this bridge where you already kind of know one guy is searching for this this uh, certain individual and then you have this other guy who's trying to rescue the girl who gets captured in the beginning again spoiler alert doesn't matter at this point just watch the damn movie uh, <laughs> um and it takes place like on the bridge where this boy agreed you know he got paid to go fishing and get him some fish and a train explodes due to some very poor craftsmanship and a leak and a fire sparks and the bridge is basically on fire and it spreads onto the water and this boy is trapped right and within like some sort of uh moment of the universe a calling of of all things that are just sacred they see each other from the distance and with the wave of a hand they knew immediately just like our friendship Blake we knew immediately that we're gonna bond and we're gonna act together to save this young boy Let's it's collaborate. our duty let's collaborate let's do this <laughs> and this leads to this insane part where you have a motorcycle on one side you have a horse on the other side you have a rope and the whole idea they don't even talk they're just like signing at each other like you do this this is going to happen and then we're going to combine at the end and all that and as an audience member you're just like whatever whatever they're going to try to do i'm so curious Let, let's see what happens they and then they the just flag is yeah. a moment for yes. sure so they yeah. go, sorry, they go, I'm excited too. No, please, yeah. I want to make sure we don't miss that, but they basically, they both then hurl, they meet up, <laughs> hurl their bodies at the exact right point off the bridge so that one can grab the boy, throw yeah. him to the other guy, the other guy throws the boy over onto the beach area, Yeah. which they could have thrown him in the water outside the fire, but whatever. They could have done off. that, but yeah. And then the road, they come back, me in the middle, and this moment's in the trailer. They're grabbing hands like this, which becomes yeah. a motif throughout the movie, where there's like two men fraternally yep. grabbing each other's hands, and maybe they're fighting, or maybe blood's going from one to the other. Yeah. So holding someone for dear life. Yeah. But in this moment, this is the meet cute. That's it. And then they start, and they kiss. Oh, wait. Did I make no, that? I made that. No, that's, that's a different movie. But okay, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. turn something in the eyes, and they're like, Fuck yeah, we just did that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro yeah. moment, top bro moment all time. Yeah. Oh my god, it, it was so epic. It that 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 kind of forearm grab is equivalent to the predator forearm grab between Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, Dylan, you son of a bitch. You know, that was like the moment where the two just like that was it. That was the bond. The significance oh. of the flag that you missed yeah, is sorry. that, yes. yeah, is that it, that that was ah. that was used to soak up water, so that uh -huh. as the other guy was throwing the boy, he threw the flag over so that he could wrap himself up yeah. as he was swinging backwards into the flames, so that he wouldn't catch on fire, which is like brilliant, brilliant. And <laughs> wait, did he die? He's stuck in the fire, and he comes back, whoo, whoosh, himself from the flag. That's it. Him. Yes. That's it. And Epic. and that solidified this lifelong friendship of two superhero human beings saving this boy. Um, lots of sl slow motion, lots of like slow moments and all that. And of course, this led into a very cute montage of two friends getting to know each other, <laughs> <laughs> which must have taken what weeks, right? I think we just saw like several weeks of their friendship where they're just basically hanging out every day, doing something. Doing the most amazing bro shit you've ever seen. On yeah. Simpler. They're not even always like fighting crime or do it. Like they're just like no. motorcycles. One of them's riding, chasing. They're like racing each other where yeah. one on a motorcycle, the other's on a horse again um there's there's the moment we talked about earlier where they climb the mountain of people just to see yep. who can get the flag at the top mm -hmm. or whatever um we we mentioned this before off camera that's the montage that i need to see in the americanized version of this movie which will ferrell's done it before that's the it yep. 
he needs to do John C. Riley and Will Ferrell need to do the American version of this movie, and that montage will be epic as absolute hell. It's one of those like I immediately during the, that moment. That's when I texted all my bros and just go, yeah. bros, movie up. We got to watch this movie. Let me know once you've seen it. Yeah, incredible montage. Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, the, the 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 sequel to Step Brothers needs to borrow a lot of moments from this movie. Uh, and you'll hear us ex- uh, talk more about it because it just gets better from here. Um, but yeah, that that whole thing again sets the tone. So if you were somewhat okay with the riot scene, and then you get like the you know the jungle scene where he he you know tests his strength against the wolf and the lion and the tiger. Yes. If this bridge scene doesn't capture your attention and be like fuck yeah let's go, you're not gonna enjoy the rest of the movie. Uh, but again, seeing like the, the bromance form from there and like, yeah, and you said they do like the most like simplest things. They're, they're eating food together. They are, you know, training together. You know, it's, it's like, just take like all the Rocky montages, but add a buddy in there, you know, and then that's basically what you see and then some, but then it leads us to one of the climax moments of the first half of the movie where they come to the realization that they are kind of quote unquote enemies, right? And the whole plot is the the guy who comes from the village family trying to rescue the girl. He has to storm the M- what is this? A fortress? Yeah, this is the part where we're just like, is it a fortress? Is it a castle? It's where the British people are, where they're they're holding captive the the young girl. And you know, they, him and his fellow villagers who are helping him out, his family, they're plotting how are they going to storm the castle, so to speak, right? They come up with this plot, and all you see, really, in the beginning is a truck. And they're trying to time it perfectly because there's a double gates, right? They're trying to time it perfectly so that the second gate is open so they could just, like, ram through and infiltrate. Now, you're like, okay, they're going to infiltrate this building, and they're going to do, like, their best mission impossible or whatever the case is storm the castle and try to do their best no 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 this is triple r though we're gonna do it with style and 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 fashion and absurdity this guy storms it with a truck full of animals from the jungle as he is flung out of this truck with tigers deer freaking wolves you know, I I don't know if there was an ostrich in that mix. Who knows? But like he was just like full on. I brought the zoo with me. Let's go to town. And this creates this really chaotic, havoc action sequence of him fighting against the British army. Um, and then you have his buddy again, realizing what's going on and stepping in and be like, no, you can't do this. I can't let you do this. Blah, blah, blah. And then they go, like, toe-to-toe with each other. Like, it, it's just a batshit crazy. I loved every second of it. Um, very moments of that, you could tell, like, were, like, kind of, like, John Wicky, like, in a way, and all that stuff like that. But it was just, like, really, really nuts. Um, what were your thoughts when this was all coming down? So, I want to do... I know we're not getting into the plot, but I want to do one yeah. other little setup thing. Is this place where this animal fight sequence is happening is also where the dance fight had happened, which yes. I forgot when we were shortlisting action sequences. So one of the other bro awesome, cute moments between these two super bros is when he's helping him with his girl trouble. Yeah. And one of the guys <laughs> is shy, and the other one is like, oh, I can help you with girls. And it, uh, <laughs> they're doing bro stuff, and at some point he throws nails on the road so that the girl's car drives yep. over the the nails p- flat tire and then now uh the shy character and the girl are interacting and that's how they learn about the double gates and he gets invited right. over to her place for coffee the yeah. friend is also having to do some translation which is really cute yeah. where he speaks enough english uh where he's helping to explain like oh no the girl wants to invite you for coffee this is good you say right. yes now mm-hmm. um that was really sweet i loved those moments and then they are at that castle house place invited over the friends go together dressed up um and they're in their western garb now and there's western style dancing that's happening 
the head of the dance is trying to say that, oh, these two men are uncivilized. They don't know how to do flamenco or tango. And then they show... I think, I think he was just a scorned dude. I think he really had the hots for the white girl. He definitely and, had the hots for the white yeah. girl. He was mad about that, for sure. Yeah. And he's racist as fuck. Oh, or 100%. He's just yeah. and using racist language in racist ways. Either way, fuck that, dude. Well, you know, and, this is the British Empire in the 20s, right? So... <laughs> He's trying to say these dudes are uncivilized because they don't know how to flamenco or tango. So they say, oh, let's show you this this Indian dance. And they're showing yeah. him, uh, I'm going to pronounce it Natu Natu. And it was the coolest fucking dance fight scene. Oh, my scene God. I it was great. Seen. There aren't a lot of great dance fight scenes in movie history. Every time it happens, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, we're doing a dance fight. Hell, yeah. Zoolander is is the, <laughs> the mark for me. I'm like, oh, this is an awesome, epic moment. It was absolutely incredible to where it had the stakes of a real dance fight and they're defeating people who are like falling over because this dance move yeah. is so difficult. Epic as fuck. And then because of they seduced the woman through the dance in this, now they have been on the premises, whatever. I think it's the same home um, as where that's taking place. I had to mention the dance fight. That said, the animal fight is absolutely incredible. We were talking before when we're shortlisting these, what's, what's our favorite? This one isn't quite on the favorite for me because it is maybe the most epic. There's more fire, more movement, more people. It was more chaotic for sure. The sad part was this is where the shy, one of our favorite characters, the hero of the first half that's a good guy, whereas the other guy might be a bad guy. This guy, he is loses the fight uh, essentially yeah. by the end. Um but one reason why I liked some of the other scenes, that there was more precision involved, which we'll get to a couple others, but like the horse and the motorcycle amazingness. This one was just bonkers because there's yeah. so much happening. They know for us to defeat this army, we're going to have to just throw everything at them. And it's kind of like there's scenes in the movie where uh, we've, we've seen in American movies where they someone sets fire to the place because they know I just have to like try to level the playing field in order to make it a fair enough fight that I can now defeat them. I um, mean, because they're not superheroes, they have to actually, like, do, do go to those measures. I'm not mad about it. It's definitely an incredible, incredible sequence. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and it reminds me of, in in his book, um, in John Hodgman's book, he, the comedian, thinker, daily show guy, he says, the best movie of all time, which hasn't been released yet, and he's, bit, like, offering the plot out, Someone make this movie, please. The concept is all animals versus all humans. <laughs> the idea being, if somehow an all animals and all humans had to fight, it'd be the coolest, most. And this is the closest movie I've seen get to that concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible. And there's moments when, like, there's a moment before when we see man throw a motorcycle at somebody. Or oh actually, yeah. We'll get to the next one. Yeah, we'll get to the next one. Yeah. Be, like flinging tigers or avoiding a tiger so that it's then propelled into someone. It's another one of the examples of this movie using very creative fight choreography uh, where there, everything is available to be used for violence. And I haven't seen the movie do that this well. This is maybe one of the best scenes for that in the movie. Yeah, Epic is yeah for sure. Like, like we, we've seen a lot of action sequences where, especially like, let's say, for example, like the, the Matrix or John Wick, where... You know, a lot of things in the in the background and in the environment is used for the fight, but we've never really seen live things being used in fights. You know, and everything they, they, everywhere all at once with the little the puppy. Are you kidding me? That's the I mean, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, okay. <laughs> if you want to add that in there, yeah, for sure. Um, it's so yeah. rare. It would be one little instance like that. This was yeah. Unreal. This is just like like tons of animals, and like you said people like people were avoiding animals but then reusing them to attack the person behind them or whatever the case is um this is also probably the most intense action sequence that used a lot of the cg you know but it's one of those things where it didn't look too fake or it didn't look distracting like everything actually like worked seamlessly throughout the entire thing i could only imagine how long it took for them in post-production to finish this entire sequence because it lasted quite a bit it wasn't yeah. like a quick thing it like it, it did last for a whole bit and like i said it, it led to the the end of like the the first arc of the movie you know it's like the movie split into two basically 
Um, and this ends that entire, you know, portion of that movie. But it, it's just so well done. It was just so entertaining and, and, you know, fist pumping and all that stuff like that. It was just like really, really great. Um, I, yeah. I, I think worth mentioning, too, is while it's so epic, I'm thinking back on it. Near the end of that fight sequence, the playing field has been leveled and you essentially yep. have a mono y mono fight where there's a rope involved and it's a age-old action movie scene where someone's dangling from a rope and the other person's holding them on and they're mm -hmm. fighting each other kind of thing. It ends up still being, these aren't superheroes. We're dealing yeah. with human physics. And yeah, sure, in real life, somebody would have died or broken a million bones or whatever. Like, it's hard to jump up. But it's, the movie doesn't sell out that aspect, mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk about other movies that have influenced American cinema. And like Crouching Tiger, for example, is one of those where we're dealing with like supernatural levels of fighting. This definitely yeah. isn't doing that. And by the end, so many humans and animals are dead. And one of my favorite things in this movie is when the superheroes are done fighting, these super humans, uh, yeah. these extraordinary humans, that you look around and there's just like devastation. Oh my everywhere. God. Like, yeah. That just happened? Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Even if you died at the end of that, you just took out 500,000 people right. and animals and bud like budget on the way out. Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Like the aftermath of all a lot of these scenes is just like, out. yeah, it's just, yeah. You just, it's like, it's like, like, like bombs have exploded yeah. in the areas and you just see like carcasses and bodies and just like rubble everywhere. It's just so funny. And then they just move on and then that's it. Like <laughs> just on to the next thing. Um, but the next big action sequence and, and, you know, again, we're just talking about the main things that really stand out. We fast forward in the storyline and, the, the guy who is the double agent actually gets imprisoned at a certain point. Now, the, the, the main guy from the first half of the movie who is there to try to rescue the little girl comes to the realization that this guy was indeed a double agent. And because he meets his, uh, is it a fiance, a, a wife, a girlfriend? I, I don't know. The, it, it's, it's road, like that's his girl and she's right. his man. She's up writing her letters secretly. Gotcha, I don't know yeah. if they the title of each other, but sure. it's that's they're each other's person in the yeah. world. Again, as if the universe was singing, you know, and, and kind of putting things the way it should be. She helps out his family trying to escape the British colon uh, the the British Empire because they just rescued the girl and they're in hiding. Real not, then realizing that this is the same woman betrothed to his best friend who quote unquote you know he had to betray and all this stuff like that and fight against each other realizing that he's now in prison and now it is his life sworn duty to save him and break him out of prison he's partially responsible because he kind of defeated the guy enough right. to a point where right. he could get the guy could get caught yeah right so he does this you know he he breaks into the area uh physically rips the the gate of his like cell off and because you know he the the guy's legs aren't fully functional because they've been kind of hurt and damaged like during the time and his torture and all that kind of stuff like that but we've seen that he's been working out upper oh, yeah. body strength all upper body strength right so yeah. almost like uh, Sam Wise to Frodo, if you can't bring it there, I'll take you with me. Basically, puts him on his shoulders, and they make one of the best prison mm -hmm. escape moments in cinema history. You know, we talked about the Ratatouille scene and everything everywhere all at once. You know, riding on the shoulders of uh, Michelle Yao as the guy is like kind of like trying to like you yes. know move yes, along. Yes. This is that times one hundred or a thousand. You know, yes. well, they're they're fighting off guards and they're fleeing each other over like fences. And while the guy on top has two guns, the guy below acts as the reloader. I mean, that was just like I've never seen that before. And that was just so brilliant and so entertaining. I mean, I don't know. I lost my fucking mind during that whole sequence because it was just phenomenal. Uh, the only two pop culture things, which I'm glad you mentioned everything ever. I was trying to remember where I seen someone doing shoulder, right? Whatever. Yeah. 
One of them is Princess Bride when the giant and um, you know what I'm talking about with the and they have the giant yeah. cloak. And the, yeah, I don't remember what the, the, he said. <laughs> making the uh, bring him to me, and they're doing that kind of thing. Right. There's no real action. What and no. the other comedy version of it is when you have three little kids in a giant trench coat and they're trying to act like an adult with a song. We've yeah, seen the that. little rascals thing. Yeah, yeah. But the joke is always like you can't move and someone's falling over. Right. Like clumsy. This was not clumsy at all. No. And it reminds me of the bridge scene where these two men are both the most equipped, bestest fighters in the whole wide yeah. world, and they always know. Okay, now's when you would reload. Okay, now is the time when the only your best move is going to be to jump over the motorcycle. If yeah. you had a moment where one guy tries to go under it, the other, and yeah, now you're not together anymore and you're dead. So it's right. just showing like these are the two most epic bros of all time. They don't even have to communicate and say, no. "Hey, can you reload me?" No, they know. Now it's time to reload. Now it's time to do the somersault. And there's a moment in particular. I don't remember how it happens. The physics are so incredible. But it's like there's a guy higher up, and they have to like fling one of them in a somersault kind of way, uh -huh. and they like hit them. And they're still. It, it was every moment we see, um, which we'll get to like uh, other movies influencing what Western fight scenes, whatever. And like there's the Jackie Chan thing where everything's a prop, and every prop is mm -hmm. something that can be for action. This feels like a movie where it's more 3D than that, where yeah. every single object is something that can somehow, like someone can be bounced into or off of. And you see it, like there's the Matrix fight scenes or whatever, where like one person's being thrown into, or like that's something you see everywhere. Someone's right. being thrown into somebody else, or you're using the stick to like make your body go in circles to fight off everyone. This is a movie that's doing that all the time. And there's mm -hmm. never a moment where these two incredible people Part of, I think, the, the brilliance of like the, that Jackie Chan of it is that it's so limited and he only has a small thing and he has to do sure. or like John Wick with a pencil kind of thing. And this yeah. one's going the opposite way with that of the, the biggest things, a bear, a tiger, a whatever, a motorcycle. These are all things that can be used as giant weapons to inflict maximum damage um, on people. This, this fight scene is really good at using physics and physical space and two people who are like-mindedly the most baddest assest humans ever, yeah, uh, just wreaked uh, wreck total damage. It was incredible. Yeah, it's it, it just took like the whole physicality to a whole other level, right? Because again, you're use you're get you got two guys in tandem with each other, and they were pretty much stuck the whole time, like during this entire like prison escape. Um, the scene you were talking about is uh, they were like climbing a tower. And there's a guard on the tower. So they kind of just look at each other and they're like, yeah, let's do this. And basically, as they're still in tandem, they flung each other just so they could like drop kick this dude from the back. And right. was, this is stuff that you see in cartoons, like right. in like action cartoons, you know, some anime films and all that. Like, like this is the first time we're seeing this kind of stuff in live action. And again, if we don't see Will Ferrell or John C. Riley doing something very similar in the next Step Brothers movie, then that's a definitely a lost opportunity. Right. Um, but it was so so freaking awesome. And then the last one we we definitely want to mention. I think this is one of your favorites too. Um, is the whole motorcycle flung in precise precision into a window that held entire rooms of. Explosive, bombs and explosives tea, yeah whatever fireworks whatever that just basically it. took down the entire like fortress or castle or whatever the case is well the brilliance of that too is the expectation is oh they're going to fling the motorcycle and it's going to hit the bad guy right and then what no and instead they do another level to playing field like the animals and the fire thing where the motorcycle misses and it goes, ah, ha, ha, these fools, they just wasted a motorcycle. Right, yeah. No, right through the window, right where all the explosives are. And am I wrong? Because, again, it's such an epic movie that it feels like a blur. Mm -hmm. Is this when he goes in and gets all of the guns? Yes. Is there, because they broke yes. it into the place. Yeah. And this is another one of those things that are so like-minded. They didn't coordinate a strategy of, okay, you're going to go in there and get the guns, right, buddy? All right. One of the characters' his whole mission in life is to give guns to the people so that the people can fight back against the Empire. Right. 
that backstory yeah. was beautiful and well done. That's another, we could put that on the short list too. The okay. scene where the father and the son are taking out soldiers. Oh, they so free. good. So good. Well done. Like actually well executed movie making plus yeah. awesome action, um, high stakes drama. And so the buddy who goes in, I think he's, I don't remember. I think he's just trying to get some guns or he finds himself in there um, when they've separated. And then he goes, oh, here's all the guns. And he drags yeah. them out. <laughs> like Samson the Bible with all of his arm strength and then just goes, here you go. Did you, you said you wanted some guns? I got your gun. Right. Yeah, like straight Hercules style, just like, like, I got you right here. Yeah, it's, it's again, like the relationship and chemistry between these two actors, characters, it, it's just so well portrayed and very, like, you don't even question anything anymore. Like once you see them together, like they can do nothing wrong. Like everything they do will be successful always, you know, and that was like the the culmination of everything, you know, the fact that they just with very little planning, just knew exactly what they needed to do, you know, just a look that they give each other, you know, and maybe a hand signal or something like that. And, he, and the guy's like, I got you. And just like <laughs> executes this day and all that stuff like that. Just so brilliant. Just just very, very well done. Um Again, would love to hear your thoughts on this list of action sequences. What was maybe there was something we didn't get a chance to talk about. I mean, this movie had so many great action so, moments, but we would love to hear what your favorite is, what you thought about the list that we have here. But this also now leads to a perfect time for us to talk about influence on Hollywood, yeah. you know, because, you know, as I, you know, when I finished watching this movie, it made me realize, all right, Hollywood's eyes are definitely going to be on this, not only because of the word of mouth, the amount of praise it's getting, the recognition and all that stuff like that. But we've seen it in the past where foreign action movies like become this big global phenomenon that Hollywood will now pay attention and say, what can we borrow from this? Who can we maybe tap to help us direct something on our side and and everything like that? When you look at the the list, you know there there are movies like Seven Samurai, uh, Kurosawa. How that director and this movie influenced so many people. You know, influenced George Lucas, Quentin Tarantino. The list goes on and on and on. Then you have like the times of the Jackie Chan era. You know, where movies like Police Story and, and um, you know, Drunken Master and all that stuff like that, how that eventually infiltrated the, the, the U.S. movie scene. And then before you know, we got the last, was it The Last Bronx or something, last whatever, um, his first introduction to the, the U.S. market. And then we've got this, like, slew of Jackie, Ch the Jackie chan -assance, right, where, like, every year we got one or two Jackie Chan movies. Then I also remember movies like Hard Boiled. You know, John Woo, the John Woo Asian action films that eventually led him to come and do stuff here in the States like Face Off and all that stuff like that. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you mentioned it before. Ang Lee, you know, kind of like that whole uh, fantasy, uh, you know, fighting type of movie. And then he eventually came over and done a slew of movies. And, we, you know, other movies have borrowed from them as well. Another one is Ong Bak, you know, the, the Thai movie with uh, Tony Ja made him a household name for that certain period of time. And, of course, The Raid, you know, Gareth Evans' The Raid, where, you know, we've seen those same people who are fighting in that movie now, you know, in Star Wars for, you know, for all intents and purposes. But how a lot of people have borrowed stuff. Like, it's easy to say, like, John Wick borrows a lot from The Raid movies and everything. And now week three we had to say that the, <laughs> some of the actors from that. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Before, like these guys might be appearing in, in Western movies. Yeah. There's also another phenomenon, which is you have so many people in such a dedicated audience in India that they mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to. And so right. that crossover there's, in the in like the American centric way of looking at it, it's like oh well when are these guys going to go Hollywood and they don't right. necessarily have to. this is as Hollywood as you could get essentially yeah. yeah no for sure and and I won't be surprised now with Triple R like it, one or two things could happen or one of three things could happen one that's definitely going to happen is that you're going to see action movies that are made here in the states borrow from what they've seen in this movie you know. I wouldn't say like exact carbon copy, but at least use some of the creativity 
and maybe kind of see what they could do to put their own spin on things here. Another is that they one of the, one or two of these actors, or maybe both, may do a Hollywood movie, an action movie, may appear as like a cameo, a background, you know, a supporting character, and all that stuff like that. I mentioned the actor Danush and how phenomenal he was in The Gray, uh, The Gray Man. Um, you know, and he was one of the standouts there. You know, we're seeing more and more of these internationally known actors now pop up in Hollywood productions, you know, and that's been happening for the past several years. Or could this director, who has only directed three movies from what I've seen, could he be now tapped to do something for Hollywood or maybe a Marvel film or a DC film or whatever the case is, you know, because it takes like a creative the creative eye and mind to come up with a movie like this and kind of give us the visuals that we were that we were entertained with throughout this movie. So this is definitely, I think, a movie that is going to lead to that conversation as like what are gonna what's influenced Hollywood from foreign markets. Um, I'm I'm curious what what do you think about it all there, Blake? Yeah, we we've, we've seen it so many different times where. America will take something else amazing from somewhere else and then kind of like sell it for parts yeah. uh, best they can or like break it into pieces and say, this works for us, this doesn't. I don't think that we'll see the musical numbers in it. Like, no. <laughs> you know, um, this is the end is an American movie that ended that way uh, yeah. where they had like at the end, they just did a, ba- a, a Backstreet Boys music number for whatever reason. I don't like you mentioned earlier, like the Morgan Freeman idea, like the if they made a version of this movie in America, you probably lose the singing, dancing aspects. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see Matt Damon and George Clooney trying to do that. Um, Although it would be great if we did. I would love it. I would love it so much. <laughs> um, that's the final, the Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, the, the bro collab that we all, right. that we've been waiting for. Um, we've, we also see in an American market where when something is a global phenomenon uh, in a crossover type way, it's they try to replicate it and replicate it. So like when Despacito happens, they realize like, oh, we can get all of the audience in America and all of the audience in Latin America, which is now so much more money. Or like you're trying to bring in Drake onto the, the, uh, the, the Romeo Santos song or in um bad boys they had the 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 nikki jam cameo in the fast and the furious movies they've had like tego calderon uh and don omar there's versions of this where they're just trying to do a little like a shout out to this actor or celebrity from another place in order to bring in that market i think if this like netflix spent 40 million on this movie and a lot of eyes are on netflix right now and how they're spending their money if they're wasting money in certain ways so like um, the stat I read the other day was about how uh, less than 2% or 1% of users are doing the, any gaming on Netflix, which was like a big push for them. Um, then there's when they'll just throw a huge contract at a director and the question is like, are y'all getting your money back in subscriptions? We, uh, we don't know. Like Stranger Things, they saw their numbers did better after the newest Stranger Things season. There's times where they're going to throw a lot of money at a director that I, we don't know where that goes. Yeah. I wish that this was a box office phenomenon. And then whenever Hollywood sees something that they can replicate, they'll then make do it over and over and over again. And there's actually a beauty to it not becoming a box office phenomenon. Because then what happens is, like we talked about with um, the most recent Jordan Peele movie, after Get Out, you just had woke horror movie, woke horror movie, woke horror. And it kind of gets watered down over time. Mm-hmm. And it's a less legit product. This movie might remain as a cult classic where we definitely will see it influence directors in the future. Um, I was just looking up a short list. We could go on and make a whole episode about this. We don't need to. But like movies that influenced The Matrix, the amount mm-hmm. of international films that are on that sure. list is, is phenomenal. Like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, um, Hard Boiled, you mentioned earlier, is on that yeah. list. That is, this is the kind of movie that'll be on that list in 10 and 20 years where they go, yep. oh, where'd you come up with the, these ideas or this choreographer of whatever the next John Wick franchise is? He goes, oh, I was 13 and I saw RRR on Netflix yep. and it changed the, what I thought was possible. Um, I, I don't know how much traction this gets in an American market. We won't see the box office numbers do 
uh, like m moving forward, it's not going to now become a big hit at the box office. It'll be the kind of things people say, you got to watch this on Netflix, which what yeah. happened to us and how we came around to it and, and what we then did to our friends, a word of mouth kind of project mm -hmm. uh, more than anything. I don't think we're going to see it get like awards considerations the way we saw Parasite or Drive My Car breakthrough. Yeah. Um, but I would hope what can happen is similarly legit Indian films, uh, sorry, similarly like epic box office Indian films can get more traction in America this way, where right. now these actors and the director are more recognized, they have more opportunities, and then they can pave a way to where one nice thing about being in New York City is the AMC empire here plays movies like this mm -hmm. almost every day. And there is yeah. another cinema in Queens that has almost exclusively movies like this. Yep. I would hope that movies like this can do even more crossing over. The way that back in the day, the, the idea of an anime film getting wide release in America was a rare concept. And now we see it pretty frequently. Yeah. They know, mm -hmm. oh, we can make money off of this, mm -hmm. we'll make this product created elsewhere and just be the middle person and try to get it to audiences so we can sell more popcorn. Right. It'd be cool if movies like this got wider releases next time because they saw, oh, this thing could make us even more money. And then mm -hmm. that's just in this in this globalized world where Bad Bunny has a cameo in the new Bullet Train movie. I would be shocked if people didn't see dollar signs and say, how can we turn this into a profit here in America? Yeah. And in the meantime, we have this beautifully this beautiful, pure product uh, that we got to enjoy. No, for sure. And. You know, it, if there was any movie that could potentially, like, open up that conversation for making these releases more mainstream, this is definitely a good start for that, you know, kind of. And I think one of the, the blessings of cinema today is that, you know, there's still not a lot of people going to watch movies. So the business and the industry is very is looking very very closely now at box office dollars to see like okay what are people willing to go out and watch and during the month of march for this movie to be in the top 5 even top 3 at certain during certain weekends that says a lot already you know when you have like uh i think it was competing against the lost city during that time you know so you had lost city at, at like number 1 but then you had this movie kind of like sneak in there and people are like what movie is this uh, but you have the thanks of the theaters like AMC who do play movies like this on occasion you know, or, or, or regularly and all that. But not a lot of people have access to these movies when they come out. A great thing that I realized um, coming out this week is uh, they did an Indian production of Forrest Gump. So there is an Indian movie that's coming out this week that is basically Forrest Gump but told through the Indian oh. point of view. And I so want to see that movie so badly because because of now being exposed to Triple R, I want to see how they would take an American classic like that and put their spin on it, you know. And but again, not a lot of people are aware that there's this movie coming out, right? And within my area of Queens, there's one theater that is showing it, you know, and it's kind of a trek from here for me to get to. Uh, you know, so if if more chains can just embrace this and it becomes a more regular thing, I would love to see that happen. Because like you said, anime before anime movies would, was like that rare thing that uh, when a new anime movie came out in the States, like certain metropolitan uh, you know, cities had it. But you had to go to that one theater that's like in the city or that's like downtown or something like that and go watch it now almost every theater chain will show it at least for the first weekend you know, oh, yeah. or the first week. Um, and you see a lot of people go out and support these movies, you know, oh, yeah. and, and now you're seeing more of that with like, kind of like the Asian films, especially after Parasite and after, um, you know, Drive My Car became very popularized. Now you're seeing more and more of those movies being shown. It would be great now to see the, the, inclusion of the Indian cinema and being put out there more because if this movie was this good what other great stuff have we missed For you real. know and then it, it's like we would have to now start digging and looking to For see real. like what we should check out right yeah yeah so. uh, I, I that that's that's on my list of things to, to possibly do is just go through this director I've already gone through some of the other actors and like okay I'm gonna try to find those movies and mm -hmm. what I can watch 
Uh, I this movie was a jaw dropping experience, and I'm hoping it's groundbreaking in that same kind of way. That that yeah. would be like if five to ten years from now we could look back at at this movie. Yeah, it's, no, that'll be great. Yeah, and I would love it. I mean, as far as like Oscar season and all that, I mean, it I could potentially maybe see it as nominated for foreign film. Um, it depends on how well they market it or how well they push for it and all that stuff like that. Maybe Golden Globes. I don't know. Maybe that's something that we could hear. Yeah. Um, it, it would be nice at least hear some global award recognition for this film. Because um, right now, when you look at the year of film, especially when it comes to the foreign market, there's not a lot of huge standouts for me personally. Um, there's like maybe one or two that I was like, oh, this is really good and all that, but nothing huge. Again, we are still far from Oscar season, uh, the Beatty season. Uh, we have still two more months for that to, to really hit home. So we could see a slew of just a bunch of stuff that comes out like towards the end of the year. But, you know, right now, this is the main foreign film that stands out to me. I don't know how you feel about that. No, yeah, that makes total sense. I think that's one other thing worth mentioning with with this kind of movie is we are, we're seeing it with Minions being just mm -hmm. such a phenomenon and worth so much money. This is a tradition that goes back. Jackie Chan, the Three Stooges, the Marx Brothers, Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin. This is a thing where this is the kind of movie it's going to transcend language. And yeah. if someone is anti-subtitles, they don't want to read one damn word, then maybe this movie isn't for them. But I'm going through like all the top earning box office movies of all time. And mm -hmm. while we're currently in a mode where we're seeing a lot of the old um, indie movies falling off and not being able to get made and not making as much in theaters, the ones that are more yeah. talky dramas, um, the, in the 80s, 90s were able to be, like you could have a What Women Want or a Stepmom kind of movie right. being Kramer vs. Kramer being a top five movie. Right. Uh, that's not happening anymore. And I'm looking over these, like the top 10 list of all time box office earners. We're looking at movies l l similarly physical, similarly universal in that they're a, a visual spectacle primarily mm -hmm. before they are a dialogue thing. So it's Avatar, Avengers, Titanic, Star Wars, Spider-Man, Jurassic World, Lion King, F and then Furious movies. These are all things that mm -hmm. can transcend. And they're a uni like the human body is a universal language singing yeah. and dance and physical action are all universal uh i i absolutely think that if if i know hollywood at all and especially nowadays more than ever they're trying to earn a buck they're going to be taking every lesson that they can from this movie and yeah. and seeing how can we take something that it's it's ripe for enjoyment for every single audience member and 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 keep that going throwing money at a project like that no absolutely and again it, it like especially within the action genre which it's so much easier to translate that over and borrow stuff um i i cannot see how hollywood is not paying attention to this and saying okay what can we do you know from this who can we borrow what can we borrow what lessons can we learn and all that stuff like that i mean we know the industry can be very stubborn and wants to do things their own way, but they also know what hits with audiences and what could generate a lot of money. And this could, if, if done right, if they borrow the right things and they translate it, and it's done creatively enough that uh, it entices audiences. You know, like, is this something that we'll see within the next year? No, but five years from now, I think, like you said, we're going to be seeing a movie that like blows our minds and we're going to hear, oh, what were your influences in this movie? And I wouldn't be surprised if they said, well, tr this Indian movie called Triple R, you know, um, yep. very similarly, like the other mo the list of movies I mentioned earlier uh, as well. So, again, love to hear your thoughts and comments about what everything, whatever we talked about today. Uh, what is your favorite or an action film that maybe we didn't mention in this list and how did that influence at least your viewing of action movies and what you expect to see in the action movies that you watch and you enjoy um, and what kind of long lasting effect would 
a movie like Triple R make in the future? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on that. Blake, any final last words or comments as we close out this episode? Uh, it's not a comment. It's a question. It's, is this the greatest film of all time? Uh, I'm still trying to think through that. Um, I will. Uh, I gave it five stars on Letterboxd for sure. Uh, and I'm just trying to figure out what, how it positions. Uh, <laughs> and it's already on the top 150 list immediately. We're going to see where right. it goes. From that. But, oh, my God. Couldn't get enough. I'm so glad we got to talk about it today. No, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it definitely was a treat, an unexpected, surprising treat. And, yeah, you know, again, I can't encourage you enough to go out and watch this movie. You know, you know, it, it's definitely worth the watch. And if you enjoyed everything that we've said so far, then you're definitely going to love this movie. But that is movie time this week. And thank you so much again for tuning in and listening or watching us here um, as we close out. Blake, where can people find you on the interwebs? As mentioned, um, go to Letterboxd. Uh, if you don't have an account there, create one. Uh, log your favorite films. Follow me. My name on there is Blake Wolf SSN. I've logged about 2,700 movies now. I have lists Woo. on there, and I rank each one, and this one definitely got five stars. Awesome, awesome. Do we have an update account? Uh, yeah, I think the last one is we're just under 20. Uh, I think it's at 19. Uh, we've gotten a couple since we started this project, and awesome. I'm going to keep pushing. Not enough people are on this app. If you love movies, you need to download Letterboxd app, anyone who's listening now. Go watch oh, RRR while yeah. you're watching during one of the dance scenes. If you're if you're not feeling it, just download that app real quick. It's awesome. And that's, yeah, that, that's, that's a good point, too. Like, the app doesn't cost anything. And if you are a movie fan like we are, it's a great way to not only track the movies you've watched, but you will come across lists that recommend movies that maybe you've never thought of watching or you've never heard of and all that. Um, and it's a great way to kind of, in a way, in essence, be within the movie community if you are a big movie fan. So I definitely encourage you all to, to check it out. Uh, I need to be more active on that. I just keep forgetting to log my stuff in there. So I have like a backlog of stuff that I have to enter in there, but I will definitely get on that. But as far as myself, Loki Geek, you could find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All the handles are on the screen like that. Um, come check me out. Check us out every week here on the YouTube channel. So thank you once again. Again, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Definitely comment, 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 comment. Comments are awesome. We love to engage with the community there. And we definitely want to hear your thoughts about all the tops that we talk about. I know there's a lot of lurkers out there and we love you equally as well. Um, but we want to hear your voice. You know, definitely do chime in on whatever you feel passionate about. And if you are an audio listener, thank you for listening and downloading the episode. You could do so again, podcast platform of choice. Just look for the Low Key Geek channel there where you can download this and all the other episodes that we put out there. So that being said, I'm Renee. This is Blake. This has been Movie Time. Thank you so much for watching. Stay cool, stay classy, stay safe, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye.